Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to change the plate on this saw. First thing we wanna do is we want to unplug it. We don't wanna come it on while we're working on it. Okay, that being said, what we need to do is we need to remove the throw plate. We'll take that out of our way. With the blade, uh, we can raise the blade up. So yeah, a little bit easier to get at. And this particular saw on the inside here, there's a flat spot the wrench sits on. Okay, and it's a thin wrench, very thin. That goes on the inside, okay. On this particular saw, every saw I've seen, it's a left-handed thread, so it's just the opposite of what you're used to doing on a thread. I know by looking at the threads that are here, if I back that up and I back it towards me, basically what it's gonna do, and you can see the threads basically are sitting like this, that's the direction it'll take the nut. So what I do is, Loosen it up. So it's spinning back towards me. What you gotta watch too, especially if you're on a dust collection system, you gotta make sure you don't drop this nut because it will disappear and you'll never see it again. So what happens is there is a washer specifically designed. That comes off next. And you can see what it actually looks like. Okay, this goes up against the saw blade. I would take the blade out, remove it, and then I would bring a, another blade back in again, slide it right over. You wanna make sure that it's flush with this here. Okay, make sure that it's perfectly flush. Washer goes in just like this. What you really gotta watch for now is, blade's got sharp edges. It's very easy for you to rub yourself up against there and cut yourself open. So be very, very careful when you do this. Okay, in order to get the nut to go back on, I'm gonna twist it towards the back of the table. I'll get it to set itself. And basically just snug it up nice and you're ready to fly again. And that's the end of it. What we have in front of us here is a stack dado set. Basically what a dado is, dado is basically a slot uh, cut to a specific depth. And in order to get the varying widths on it, uh, we use this stack dado set. It'll take it anywhere from a quarter inch wide up to 13 16 inch wide. And how we do that is we have two circular blades. They go to the outsides. In order to get them in the right position, we want to have teeth pointing towards the operator if you look on this particular ones, it tells you that this one goes to the left side when you're installing it, and this one on the other side, it'll tell you it goes to the right. Over here, we have what they call chippers. They go in between the two blades. And if you notice, they come in varying thicknesses. This one's a 16th, that one's an eighth. And you can stack several of them up in between in order to get the width that you're after. If the width's not perfect and you're a little bit under, what you can do is you can add shims. So when you stack them, the shims can be a metal shim like this one here, or you can buy specific ones that are in increments of a thousandth of an inch, and they may be steel, they might be plastic, or you can make your own sometimes out of things you have laying around. If you stack these up, it's just gonna make it a little bit wider, so it gives you a wider cut. Here we're going to show you how to install the stack dado head. First thing you're going to do is you're going to put the first circular blade. It'll say right side on it, basically the teeth pointed towards you. That's the first thing that's going to go on. And it's going to come up flush up against the flange that's there. Okay. Then you're going to put a chipper in. In this case, we're going to put an eighth of an inch chipper in. And when we line them up, we want to make sure that the teeth aren't touching each other because that'll make it too wide. So what we wanna do is we wanna slide them in so that there's spacing between them. For the second one we're gonna put on, this one here is a much thinner, this is a 16th of an inch. What we wanna do is when we put them on, is we wanna stack it so that they offset each other at about 90 degrees. If I'm to do another one, and I put two more on, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set them up So 
but they're in between. Put the last one on. That way all of them are offset. The last thing I'm going to do is I would put the other circular saw to the outside and I slide it on. Like I say, making sure that none of the teeth are touching. Once I get there, with that right there, if I slide it on, it just has enough thread to hold it. With the nut, if you look at the nut on here, it has like a washer on one side. You want the washer to go up against that plate there. Remember, it is a left-handed thread and you do not have a lot of room in here for your fingers. Watch, you don't cut yourself. Yeah, just take your time. Once you have it there, sure it's good and snug. Yeah, okay. Now what you would do is you'd run a test cut on that. Just to make sure and see exactly what the width is. If it's not to the width that you want, you can add whatever kind of shims you have in between and keep building them up until you get the right size. Okay. In this case, the dado blade is quite wide. It's wider than the actual throat plate that we have here. So we have to make up our own throat plate in order to get this to work. So in order to do that, what you have to do is you have to basically take a piece similar to this one here. You have to measure the distance from here to here, which would be the distance over to here, which in this case is one and a half. So I wanna make sure through this process that I don't run this blade into the fence. Okay, what we want to achieve, we want to achieve something that looks similar to this. And how we do that is, we lower the blade, down below the surface. We would put the plate in here like this. And we would pull our fence over. And we're gonna use this to lock it down. So I wanna make sure that I'm not sitting on the one and a half inch line. I wanna give myself a little bit of room to play. And if I lock the fence in, it holds the plate down so it doesn't come up in the air. And what we would do is we would turn the saw on and then we would wind the saw slowly up until it came through, sort of like that on the backside. 